Welcome back to Data Breach Monitoring and Early Detection in Government, sponsored by RSA and Kerasoft on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM. I'm your host, Jason Fornicola, and my guest is Peter Tran, General Manager and Senior Director of RSA's Worldwide Advanced Cyber Defense Practice. Peter, in the last segment, you mentioned something that was particularly interesting, and that is on this analytics collection piece, agencies need to um, understand better the behavior of the network. Do you feel that that we're doing an adequate job of that? Uh, and give me your thoughts on that. We are just scratching the surface there, and directionally is the right way to go. And in government, we're seeing that happen, which is great, which is great. That's what we want to see. And oftentimes, it's a lack of understanding of, is analytics this sci-fi, robotic, artificial intelligence that I need a PhD for? And what I say is, look, um, PhD stands for pilot high and deep, right, for your data. You, you don't necessarily need to, to think about it that way. What you need to think about is they have the technology, the government has technology now, commercial side has it as well, that what we call the law of marginal gains. You can start to tune what you have now to open up the aperture, see more, hear more, and you can start to then say, what is it telling me? Am I going to analyze that? Is it telling me, geez, I have traffic that is happening at 2 a.m. that should never be happening? That, that, that is truly what analytics is all about at the simplest term. Like, is there something off kilter? I mean, why is my doorbell ringing at 2 a.m. when nobody tends to, right? That is very, very simple. But when you apply that at scale in information technology and security, you're letting your tools munge that data for you mm -hmm. and tell me, doorbell ring, doorbell not ring, right? Knock on the door, not knock on the door, what time, where, that makes a big difference. And we're definitely moving that direction, but to do it at scale is the challenge. And as we're moving into, um, with the executive order, with this new administration and the cybersecurity framework and everything that we're pushing, it starts to frame it, starts to shape every program that's starting to refresh and move to the cloud and move into mobility. And there is that modernization push uh, for the federal government. And it's happening pretty fast. And security is part of that. And I have to say, uh, again, experienced at RSA is we make concerted efforts and they see it with our partners as well to say, look, we need to be interoperating and compatible and with a technology like NetWitness being part of the Doden APL or the um, the uh, DOD integrated network and the approved product list, they call it the Doden APL, um, it is certified to, to be across all government. That's the first step to say, look, I can get data packets, I can analyze them, I could take all the logs and those doorbells and knocks and things like that, and I can analyze them and take action on them. And that's really, really important to remember. It's not rocket science to do it. So we have the technology, we're taking the steps, we're moving in the, the right direction, as, as you said, we're working toward things like operability and we're utilizing the cloud more with all of these things in place and also knowing how rapidly the cybersecurity field evolves and moves and changes almost daily sometimes, uh, it, it, can we realistically prevent breaches from happening? And if so, if you believe that, what's the best strategy to attack that? Prevention is really a tricky, tricky approach. And not saying that you shouldn't move towards prevention, but a, uh, a strategy um, around the complexity and sophistication of the threats we're facing is taking a risk Based approach. That being, the idea is you know you're going to get hit, you know you're going to have attacks daily, by the minute, whatever the case is, and you want to start to de-risk your environment. See more, know where your risks are, drive the context both from a business perspective and from a technology risk perspective, and that's what we call business-driven security. Mm -hmm. So you know not only is your technology at risk, but you know how what the impact is going to be to the mission and to the business, particularly in the government. And risk tends to, when you de-risk, you minimize that dwell time we talked about earlier, and you minimize that exposure for breaches. So when we look at these issues, there's obviously the technology piece, but we also have a cultural aspect of it as well in an organization, large enterprises like big companies or like the federal government. Talk to me about how culture and technology fit together. Should be hand in glove. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it hasn't. It's been an IT on one side and security on another and 
one was break fix, one was just a uh, an overhead saying, hey, hey, listen, you can't do that. Uh, when we start to integrate culture, it becomes uh, muscle memory. For example, uh, when a new employee of the federal government joins, uh, he or she may then say, look, um, security is part of, of your job, and here's how it is. So it becomes part of the the uh, KSAs or the key skills and, and yeah. abilities, right? And we drive KSAs into the federal government. And in order to get access to your systems or to do your job, you need to have a core competency to pass. We're doing that in the public sector, and we're trying to build awareness and in the culture over time. So you have new employees, you have midterm employees, and you have the ones that are more senior that are driving them across the board. It's not going to be an overnight uh, process, but certainly it's very, very important to make it part of the muscle memory across the board. When you talk to your customers today uh, in the federal space, what are they saying to you, not only about this issue overall, but that cultural piece as well? They're saying, how can we drive both the culture and more skills? Mm -hmm. There's a uh, very large call out there for, we need more skilled cybersecurity. And my response to that is, we need more culture to shift the current skill set uh, that's that we have. We're gonna we're gonna recruit and we're gonna drive new uh, new skills. But there's a lot of talent out there that we can shift culture and have that mindset to say that's your new talent base. So I think they're starting to appreciate the fact that there is a balance between that. And you mentioned these phases of employees, ones that are just coming on board who can learn about this in their onboarding process. But you also have employees who have been there for decades. Uh, talk to me about how maybe the older, more seasoned workers can impress upon the new workers the importance of getting this right? This, this, the veterans or this, the seasoned, I should say the, the well-seasoned uh, government executives are on board and, and they're saying this is the new, the new federal government. This is the new embracing social, embracing uh, digital across the board, mobility and, and more flexible work environments, starting to really have innovative thoughts. And that then embraces the millennials that are coming in to say, oh, you understand my culture, right? You understand where I'm coming from. I want to move fast. I want to have the ability to, to be mobile and to, to uh, have on-demand uh, data when I need it, whenever I need it. And oh, and there's, by the way, there's this security thing. I don't want it standing in my way. So that shift is really important between the more tenured to say, I'll embrace your culture and and in response, you'll embrace uh, the security aspects of it as well. A good place for us to break. Peter, coming up, we'll talk about what lies ahead in the future. My guest is Peter Tran, General Manager and Senior Director of RSA's Worldwide Advanced Cyber Defense Practice on Data Breach Monitoring and Early Detection in Government, sponsored by RSA and Kerasoft. I'm your host, Jason Fornicola, and you're listening to federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.